And so for you know people that are not acquainted with you, you know, introduce yourself and uh, what, what do you think voters need to know about you? Well, my name's Chris Parlier. I'm a candidate for Kern County Supervisor District 2. I'm a military veteran, a retired special agent with California Department of Justice, Bureau of Narcotic Enforcement. And I did eight years on the Bakersfield City Council and two as vice mayor. I was a, really a, a good councilman for my area. I was very connected to my constituents. I was known as a rubber meets the road councilman and getting things done. Um, and a worker bee, you know, really focused on constituent services. And so what inspired this run for supervisor? I mean, we talked about a little bit ago, kind of a shotgun wedding of sorts. I mean, right. So why, why do you want this job? Well, I uh, really love working for, for the people. Working for my constituents when I was a council member uh, was a lot of fun, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I was good at it. And, and I really think that with a short two-year term with this, this seat, that it's going to be uh, somebody's really going to have to know what they're doing, and I feel I have that experience and ability to do that. And so, kind of take me through. You know, obviously, you've you've served in public office before. Right. I mean, what are some of the biggest takeaways you've gained uh, through that experience that you'll be able to bring to this? Well, I was involved with the hiring of 100 new police officers for the city of Bakersfield, uh, bringing shot spotter technology that really saved lives for downtown Bakersfield. I got all the major roads and most of the secondary streets completely repaved in uh, in my area, which was within District 2, of course, too. Um, and I was really known as somebody that works good with others, whether that's my colleagues or, or staff or department heads or my constituents, just to get things done. Well, and so those are some of the accomplishments. What are, what are some of the things that you've learned through that experience? That really having interpersonal skills to connect with people, I think, is the biggest attribute. So let's talk a little bit about the issues now. Um, okay. You know, what do you consider to be some of the biggest issues facing, maybe let's just say Kern County and then specifically the second district that you'd like to tackle? Well, I'm running on public safety and uh, also jobs and infrastructure. And you know, the roads that I hear, especially out in East Kern and West Kern too, are in pretty poor shape. And again, I have a good track record of getting that fixed. Public safety is really important to folks too. Rural crime is an issue. Uh, with my law enforcement experience and the experience I've had with the city of Bakersfield, uh, really helping to build those law enforcement services in place that diminished response times with Bakersfield from 13 minutes to three minutes uh, when I was on there. And I, I feel that we'll be able to do similar things with uh, Kern County. And so talking a little bit about uh, the district as well, um, obviously it's very expansive. It's huge, uh, yeah. It's, it's a very diverse community. You know, in talking with voters in the region, you know, what are you hearing from them or the things that they really want from the supervisor? Well, they want somebody that's connected. They want somebody that's responsive. Uh, they want those needs, uh, again, with law enforcement services, uh, infrastructure needs with, with roads. Uh, I hear out in er East Kern that uh, they like another ingress egress area over the railroad track so half of Rosemont isn't stuck you know on one side if there's an emergency or something you can't get across Fraser Park they like their pond uh, you know reconstituted because all the water went out of it uh, I hear out in West Kern uh, Taft Maricopa farming needs uh, also oil oil is a huge provider and a financial provider to Kern County and the the state has really gone after that industry and and I feel I'll be able to help and support that too. And then you get south too with our agriculture, the new Hard Rock casinos coming online. The part of my uh, abilities when I was a council member, creating literally thousands of jobs with new construction along that southern corridor. I covered the most ramps of any council member on the city of Bakersfield. I believe I had five freeway ramps and, and it really led to the um, expansion of business and business services as you go south through Bakersfield. And so looping back uh, to talk about law enforcement and kind of supporting right. that. So, um, you know, from talking to a lot of other, other candidates, law enforcement's a pretty big priority for them, too, and some mm -hmm. improvements they'd like to see. So what are some specific improvements you'd like to see in terms of improving law enforcement in our region, and what sets you apart from maybe your opponents in that area? Well, I have a lot of experience. Like I said, I'm honorably retired uh, from state law enforcement, again, with California DOJ, Bureau of Narcotic Enforcement, essentially as a state narc. And, through my law enforcement career, I worked with every law enforcement agency uh, in the county at the time, uh, also with, with Bakersfield and expanding those law enforcement services. One thing that's really important with the Sheriff's Department, 
not only expanding our, our deputies, our probation officers too, which is a key component, but our detention deputies. Because if people go into custody and we do not have those detention deputies, then really nobody stays in jail. And that's really going to be a focus too. All right. Um, so looping back into oil um, right. and agriculture, um, oil obviously is a huge issue in this region, especially in, in District 2, mm -hmm. you know, which you'd be representing. Um, you know, you said you want to be a champion for oil. How exactly do you go about accomplishing that? Well, connecting with the people that are responsible for drilling. That's our independent drillers. Uh, I was recently endorsed by SIPA, California Independent Petroleum Association. I'm very proud to have an endorse, that endorsement. I'm also endorsed by Donnie Youngblood um, and a host of others. The, it's BizFed, Central Valley BizFed, which is business federated to support Central Valley businesses. Uh, also the Farm Bureau, uh, the Realtors, um, and a host of others. But specifically when it comes to supporting those organizations, like right. what can you do as a supervisor to help that issue flip? Because we hear all the time, right, you know, we don't like the, the situation that the state is imposing on this right. kind of industry. You know, how do you go about combating that? Well, you have to be a fighter, and, uh, but you have to be able to create relationships too. Um, I think I have that ability. And you have to, whatever we can do to diminish regulation within the county, the fast track things, if that's permits for builders, uh, permits for oil, or permits really for just about anything, uh, it should be an easy process for whoever needs it. And talking about a little bit more about the governor and kind of these, the state legislature and these kinds of um, you know, mandates on industry. Right. You know, from, from listening to a lot of people who live out in the second district, they, they almost feel like they want a fighter, somebody who can really push back against this kind of what they perceive as an overreach from the state. Do you feel like you're that kind of person? I absolutely do. Uh, and another thing is with Kern County, we're number one. We're number one in ag, we're number one in oil, we're number one in renewables. So we have the whole basket. Uh, but a lot of times when uh, people from Sacramento or Northern California or Southern California, they just don't recognize the importance of our region. Uh, when I was on the California League of Cities as, an, as a, a person assigned to that, as a, a council responsibility, I was really shocked at uh, how leaders within our state really didn't have the knowledge of Kern County and the, the ability that Kern County has to provide really everything that the state needs. Yeah, it's almost just kind of they don't they don't they don't see it. They, they don't see it. Going on. No. Well, how can we go about getting them to see it? You get them to see it by being engaged, by having uh, not only representation but the lobbyist, and creating synergy between the various organizations, whether it's trade organizations, business organizations, that everybody is marching to the same uh, beat and has a goal to uh, push back on legislation that affects us and affects our livelihood. Definitely. Um, so one of the other th issues I want to touch on real quick um, is in terms of uh, revenues. Um, you know, in talking to, to other candidates and to listening to people in the district, you know, obviously money and revenues right. is very important for all of these kinds of programs. And, you know, specifically how measure money and other taxes plays into that. You know, mm -hmm. how do you feel about potentially uh, the, the concept of measure money? And are you someone who's going to oppose any form of new taxation? Well, Measure N for the city of Bakersfield was a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. And Measure K was a similar measure uh, with the county. And I really feel that that is a life raft for the, the county of Kern, too. Uh, in a perfect world, no, I don't want any more taxes, just like anybody else. Uh, but if you want the services for, for law enforcement, uh, you want a safe community, unfortunately, right now, uh, it's a necessary evil. Um, so taking a look at the, the current state of the Board of Supervisors, um, you know, from hearing from some people in the district, you know, that mm -hmm. I've talked to, they almost kind of seem like they, the, of the rest of the board and maybe the county doesn't necessarily hear their concerns in the second district. And maybe that's right. just because of the, the previous supervisor or just the way things have been. You know, how do you go about bringing the voice of District 2 more to the forefront on the board? Well, you have to be engaged. When I was a city council member, I gave out my personal cell phone number. And uh, in the beginning of this interview, I gave a handout that it has, still has my, my cell on it. And if somebody wants to get a hold of me, you just call me and we'll engage in a conversation. Uh, again, I'm a rubber meets the road person. And uh, I love being engaged and talking to constituents. Uh, in fact, there was a matter uh, for the American Legion in Tehachapi that had a deed issue 
uh, and I'm not even elected office yet, but they reached out to me and it had been languishing for, for two years within a county department and able to get that solved and that trust deed is on the way and it's great for our veterans. All right. And so the final question I kind of have for you is, um, you know, you know, say you win this election, you know, you're there in the right. first 30 days, what is the first thing you'd like to accomplish being there in office? Well, I need a good team. You start building the team around me with staff, uh, engaging with the community, and look at those needs with the various department heads to meet the constituent needs, uh, law enforcement needs, road needs, bringing back that pond for, for Fraser Park, supporting our oil industry, our ag industry, um, bringing jobs to the region, uh, East Kern supporting the spaceport, uh, hopefully get vertical launch out there at some point, uh, and maybe even a, a transportation hub with trucking. And everybody thinks about oil and ag, but number three for Kern County is trucking. And I think we're primed for some sort of regional delivery area too. All right, great. Um, so like I said, that's pretty much everything I wanted to touch on. Um, is there any other topics or, or things about the campaign that you'd want to discuss that maybe we didn't talk about already? Well, I will say out of six candidates that are on here, I call them my, uh, my candidate colleagues, and not opponents, but candidate colleagues, because we have really gotten along good through this process. and. Uh, and I just want to thank them for that.